In February 2012, Barney was placed in the time slot before My Little Pony on the Canadian Children's Network, Treehouse TV. This was enough to push one young man over the edge. That young man was Lee Goldson. Hey there, Lee! How are you? <laughs> Lee Garrett Goldson was born January 8, 1995, and lives in Ontario, Canada. Although placed on the autism spectrum as a child, he enjoyed a normal adolescence by playing video games, watching cartoons, and even performing in a local band. Lee would go on to attain a degree in film studies at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario in 2017. Despite his life appearing to be happy and ordinary on the outside, a look into his inner world paints us a different picture. The following is a letter addressed to his former high school's resource department. Hello, Resource Department of Data Expunged. I have written this to discuss some issues I have had so I can clear my mental state as I further progress into an adult. I have written this paper to describe some terrifying experiences throughout my life. More specifically, regarding a certain purple dinosaur that ended up getting too much screenplay during my tenure here. Hat show is Barney and Friends. I hate this show with all my heart. Nothing can deter me from my hate from this show, and it's mostly caused from seeing it being played in such excess in the department. My main problem is that this tripe has no place in high school. In fact, back in elementary school, you'd be ridiculed if you claimed you liked Barney. You see this show as if it was something to be worshipped, yet it's a show made for toddlers used regularly in this high school. This show doesn't do anything that would benefit any high school student. In my opinion, it doesn't make sense to show someone Barney Let's Play School when the student in question has already attended several years of elementary school and is in high school when he is watching it. Now I know what you're going to say to me, their minds aren't developed yet. I say bull. I've seen Three Stooges being played here before, and I've even seen an episode of Batman the Animated Series being played here, both of which according to popular opinion are very complex and more suited for adult mindsets. But no one will tell me that about Barney. Your ideals about how you approach which material you show to these people, I don't find very perceptive. I remember I tried suggesting playing Beavis and Butthead Do America when I was there, which is a PG-13 movie with some sexual undertones, yet you wouldn't play it. Yet in grade 12, I see Pink Floyd's Pulse concert being played on a smart board next to Data Expunged, watching Barney and Friends. You know what Pink Floyd also made? The Wall, a movie where a drugged up rock star isolates himself from the rest of the world, descends into madness, becomes unable to have sex with his wife, and faces an imaginary trial where his juror is a pair of buttocks with a pair of testicles for a chin. In fact, in that same movie, Pink is revealed to be this man-child who is unable to grow up and is mentally unable to grow to its full mental capacity. You know why you won't play that? because the story parallels your treatment of the resource students. You realize that the students have just as much of a mental wall as Pink does, that's why. Now there's a conundrum for you people, trying to teach your students not to be man-children, yet letting them watch shows which make them man-children. This leads to the question, whose side are you on? For an institution of your kind, I don't want any contradictions being spread to the students. If you're trying to tell me that Barney and Friends and The Wall are on equal levels of intelligence, you'd be dead wrong. But I can't judge this for myself because you people are so obsessed with showing them Barney that I'm scared of even listening to Pink Floyd in fear that I might like them and end up liking Barney as well. The fact that you try to coddle the children into a more soccer mom, childlike environment, but try mixing up more adult things in there doesn't work because it makes me feel bad about myself, as if by liking certain things they watch. I feel just as mentally incapable as they are. Now, whenever I look at someone with a Pink Floyd t-shirt, I just think to myself, what an idiot. He probably likes watching Barney and Friends as well. And it's all because of you people. I think the same way about people who listen to ACDC, Queen, Bachman Turner Overdrive, Rush, The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, ZZ Top, and Genesis. You might say it's what they like, but I started to doubt this when I started to notice Data Expunged being shown Be My Valentine Love Barney twice in a row. And near the end of the year, he started slapping the EA showing him it because he started to catch on. And when I even talked to his parents about it, 
they revealed that they didn't even know their son watches Barney. Which leads me to think that you have this mindset that every severely disabled student likes watching Barney and Friends. You keep trying to stop people from stereotyping your students, but you're the ones doing the stereotyping. Isn't that just ridiculous? What I'm saying here is, challenge these kids. Don't let them regress. Don't just resort to one show and expect it to solve everything, because that will not work. Probably the most shocking of bombshells comes from my local church. I typically don't pay attention very often, but one particular sermon that caught my attention was one day when the priest started talking about how if your son was still acting like a baby, even though he's 14, there's something wrong with him and that he needs to fully act his age to fully accept the blessing of Christ. To me, this also includes people who still like watching poorly made toddler shows like Barney and Friends. Since my departure from this place, the memories launched from seeing one of the bands being played within the vicinity of Barney has triggered me greatly. I can't see someone in a Rush t-shirt without seeing a disabled teen watching Barney in my mind. I've basically become the protagonist in the wall, shutting myself off because I fear the outside world will hurt me if I try to interact with it. This is what you've done to me. You may be able to stop this though. On this paper, I will give you the opportunity to sign it noting that you have read this entire thing, thought it through, analyzed it, and are able to actually make a claim knowing full well what the consequences of your actions have led to and realizing what you can do to stop a story like this from happening again. If you see someone watching Barney by their own volition, actually tell them they shouldn't do that. If they like it, tell them they can watch it at home where they won't be publicly judged by the outside world or subtly distract them from it. If you willingly show these students Barney, that's when you failed as a teacher because you've realized you're unable to reach them. Their parents sent them here for a reason, you know. All I want is for this school to stop showing kitty shows and anything made for babies to these students. Teletubbies, not allowed. Barney, definitely not allowed. If you still think that the mindset you think they have is what they do have, Sesame Street I will allow because if you have to absolutely show them something like it, then I will make an exception. Sesame Street has proven time and time again that their standard of education is still relevant to this world today. Going for a nonprofit stance shows how much they're devoted to their craft. If that was played every day instead of Barney, it'd be less problematic. Although my preferred solution is that it's used in moderation. It's not a matter of whether they like it or not. It's a matter of whether they get anything from it. No matter how much they watch Barney, they go into it and take nothing from it. One ear, out the other. If you're going to show these students anything, then I highly suggest that you email me beforehand and I will judge because I seem to have a more personalized experience and a better grasp on the concept of quality. My experiences have made me traumatized to the point where I report these findings on an image board where my attempts to tell people about this have only led people on there to call me gay. Again. You could have stopped this. I pretty much revolved the rest of my life around not being associated with Barney in hopes I don't end up like those who like it. I can't think, I can't live, because everywhere I go, I see that purple dinosaur's visage. Basically, I highly recommend that Barney stops being shown in this school and let these children grow to their full potential. By signing this essay, you admit you were wrong. Your efforts will go towards making the special ed department a better place to me and the outside world. Please, for the sake of my sanity. It would be really nice to reach a definite resolution to this situation. TLDR, if you were a resource department supervisor, which song would you play to the resource students as a whole? The wheels on the bus or another brick in the wall part two? This letter was looked over by Lee's parents, but ultimately never sent. Instead of attaining closure by confronting his plethora of personal issues or publicly speaking out against the embarrassing infantilization of the disabled, he has instead dedicated his life to finding My Little Pony content on 4chan and replying with a barrage of images and violent messages. His first identifiable post contained an image of this schedule and said it was the network, trolling bronies everywhere. He would go on to continue posting variations of this idea daily and coined the word Barney in August 2012. This signature word would be the name he gave to people he perceived as fans of Barney and was used to identify him as a poster. 
In November 2013, a 4chan user found a DeviantArt account named X86X2 hosting the iconic television schedule titled All Bronies Watch Barney and Friends Fact. This same username was also used for other websites, including TV Tropes and Reddit. All of the accounts held incredible hatred for Barney and MLP, making them certainly connected to the Barney Fag poster. His deviant art account lets us know him a little better. His favorite TV shows are Beavis and Butthead, Animaniacs, Tiny Toons, and Tales from the Crypt. His favorite bands are Cannibal Corpse, Death, Alice in Chains, Yes, and Agaloc. In his favorites page, we see that he has liked hundreds of anti-MLP and Barney images, many of which being violent and graphic depictions towards the fictional characters. He has also made many journal posts on his page, beginning with, Never thought I'd see the day when I'd post a journal on here, but I guess here I am. In case you don't know who I am, I am a proud Brony hater that will try anything he can to convince Bronies why they shouldn't be obsessing over their show in public. I'm also a prog metalhead and have gone to relevant sites to gush over it where it's appropriate. I might not talk a lot on here, but that's sort of how I am. If I do have something to say, I'm going to speak my mind on it. Anyways, that's me in a nutshell. For people who like this, please enjoy the rest of your day. His next post goes on to complain about being banned from TV tropes. People thought I was being too harsh with my anti-brony beliefs, and so they decided to eject me from the site, so I took refuge here. His later posts are spiteful reviews for Barney and Friends episodes, each of which he watched entirely. His post, a criticism of a Barney episode, begins with, Did I mention how much I hate Barney and Friends? He goes on to summarize the entire 28-minute episode, Let's Help Mother Goose, while poking holes in the plot and characters. In another lengthy Barney hit piece, he described who's in the forest as a slog. He then moved on from episodes to reviewing Barney literature by reading seven Barney books, including sticker and coloring books. He reviews Baby Bop, What Can We Do Today? Barney Beginnings, Opposites, Playtime, Barney and Baby Bop, Seasons and Weather, Barney and Mother Goose Activity Pack, Barney's Wonderful Winter Day, and Barney's Happy Valentine's Day. He ends this book review with, Overall, none of these stood up to Carl Sagan's Cosmos. They were all shallow, lacking depth and trying too hard to be artsy when it should have just not even tried. I'm f***ing done. He also attempted to create an anti-Barney board on the image board, formerly known as 8 but the mods had promptly taken it down. On August 10th, 2014, he discovered that someone had made a Know Your Meme page for the term Barney f which he took credit for. Two weeks later, Lee would post a journal entry about a real-life exchange he had at church with the parents of a special needs child. So today I was in church, because my mother made me, and I didn't feel like going, because I knew there'd be this one Barney f that would make me end up going on the Barney-hating rampage that I do today. I surveyed the church to see where he was, so I knew I could confront him and tell him not to do that again. What do you know? That disgusting Barney lover and his family was right there at one of the exits, just looking out at everyone as if they think he's so good. Before the closing hymn was sung, I walked out of the church to find them. I told them that their son should stop watching Barney and Friends. I told them that it wasn't right for him to be of the age he was and still watch Barney and Friends. Because seriously, he really shouldn't. He watched it pretty much religiously, like two hours every day when I was in high school. The one he watched the most was Be My Valentine, Love Barney. I told them that my dad wouldn't let me get Super Princess Peach for the Nintendo DS because he thought it was a girl's game. And if I was in this Barney f situation and I wanted something Barney related, I would have done the same here. I didn't try to insult him or anything. I didn't resort to name calling. I just said what was going on and why it should matter. Just the bare facts. They were wondering if he did watch Barney, pretty much pretending that they didn't know about his habits. But I told them whoever's responsible to stop it, including the special ed department at his school. We went our separate ways and I got that out of my system, thankfully. To be honest, I felt better after giving them a piece of my mind. Now they know how their actions affect others who are disturbed by their offspring's actions. Good thing too. I just needed to vent real hard after keeping it in for so long. So yeah, that was all I really wanted to say. 
I just wanted to share my experience today. If anybody who's reading this wants to share their experiences with me, go right ahead. After this, he disdainfully reviews the Barney episodes Hop to It and Picture This. His final Deviant Art post was September 19th, 2015, where he reviewed Barney and the Backyard Crew. At this point, Lee had been posting his anti-Barney propaganda for over three years and even added Steven Universe to his list because of the shared voice actress for Riff and Amethyst. His exceptional behavior earned him a thread on the internet gossip forum, Kiwi Farms. User Jens Dupays created the Barney Fag thread on July 11, 2015, with what little information they knew about him at the time, including his aforementioned letter, his deviant art, and what other information he had anonymously shared during his crusades, including a motivation to kill the creator of Barney herself. He links to a thread where Lee has delusions surrounding Barney's creators, and an MLP episode with sunflowers singing a Barney-like song that had sent him into paranoia. We are such happy flowers. We will now sing for hours. I think a lot of you remember my experience at Fan Expo Canada about how I told Todd Habercorn, who was on Barney, that I hope he regrets being on Barney. Now, Andrea Libman and Tabitha St. Germain were also at that same convention, but I didn't talk to them. Then the following year, the Singing Sunflower episode pops up. I don't know about you, but I think this was Todd's way of getting his revenge on me. They're clearly after me. It's the same reason I saw one of the Barney eggs that tormented me so when I was walking back home from Rainbow Rocks. I think at this point, there are people who are literally looking at everything I do just to try to make me go insane with rage. It really is a conspiracy. I said that to the guy who played Mr. Knickerbocker in a Barney video, and there were other MLP VAs who were there. He must have told them about me and started finding more about my personal information. That's why the MLP episode that had the Barney sound-alike song in it had a Beavis and Butthead writer, since I had a Beavis and Butthead YouTube channel five years ago. And Peter New, who I said to have voiced Best Pet when I watched Littlest Pet Shop, ended up voicing the flowers that sang the song in the episode. Couple that with three bands mysteriously dropping off the Summer Slaughter tour that I had purchased tickets to. And I think there's a conspiracy going on. I swear they're after me. That's why I'm going after them. Pick related, the Barney Creator's House. His thread would gain some replies, but due to his anonymous nature, little was known about him. Only three weeks later on August 3rd, Lee would join his own thread under the name X86X2. He originally used a different profile image, but the site admins had forcibly changed his picture. In his first post, he brings up Peter Gabriel from Genesis. He is a sensitive topic for him because Peter Gabriel formerly dressed up as a flower during concerts, which bears a resemblance to the sunflowers in the MLP episode. Lee would go on to bear many fruitful conversations during his stay on Kiwi Farms. A user asked, why are you so incredibly violent towards the woman who created Barney? And why do you think people would reward you for murdering her? Good question. To be fair, I sort of acted that way impulsively because I knew the effect that her show had had on me and others. Me, mostly. I can't say I feel the will to do it now, considering how I currently have different plans for my life. I thought that she had known what she had done and did it to mess with the world as it is. I had thought she was the creator of all destruction, the one out to get to me and my life by making the most sterile bullshit possible and use it to infect me. I thought people would reward me because I knew how other people had hated the series as much as I did. I felt that I would have done the world a favor by doing the thing that everyone thinks of doing but never has the balls of actually doing. Why all of the insistence that you'd never do it? To be fair, I am a man of many opinions. One problem I have is that I'm very inconsistent with my beliefs. They're always changing depending on my mood. Right now though, I'm trying to get myself to calm down and not think about it. I'd say that the MLP clip in particular got me to reevaluate if I really should go about being the way I am. I can't really feel angry right now, and anger is what had gotten me to be the way I was in the first place. Right now, however, I'm trying to focus more time on things I like, such as doom, as well as further introspection to inspect how I had gotten this way to begin with. Do you think you have the skills necessary to be a 4chan mod? Why or why not? Yes, I'd say I do. I have an app on my MacBook called RSS Notifier, 
which is an RSS feed on the side of my screen that shows what the RSS has to offer. 4chan has their own RSS feeds for each board, which shows the OP of each thread as they're made, which makes it easy to show whenever something obviously isn't allowed on the site. Considering how I have this app always open on my MacBook and how much free time I have in my life, I felt I would be a nice benefactor to the site. What would you do if someone created a thread that wasn't against the rules, but you didn't personally care for? I'd just keep it open. If it started derailing into something off topic or illegal or something that the Anons on 4chan clearly want mods to delete, I'd go ahead and do what I have to. Even if someone started a thread about how much they enjoy Barney? Ugh. I'd keep my eye on it if it starts to derailing into something else that isn't allowed. As a mod, I'd have to do what is right. I don't want to abuse my powers. And yet, Barney Fag still wants to kill an innocent elderly woman. I think I said here that that's not in my current plans. I want to focus on other things right now. Not in your current plans? Killing an elderly woman should not be in your plans at all. If you truly want to turn over a new leaf, you should forget about her. You could say I'm trying to do that right now. Like I've said, whenever I thought about doing it recently, I can't really get angry. I can't feel the anger that made me want to do it in the first place, which probably means I won't do it. The only problem with turning over a new leaf now is I tried doing that in February and quickly relapsed. Now if I try doing it, it'll just be like the boy who cried wolf and people will just think I won't actually go through with it. Barney, do you have a job? What do you do in your spare time when you're not spurging about a show made for toddlers and contemplating murdering an elderly woman? Unfortunately, no, I don't have a job right now, and doing those things aren't taking up the majority of my day right now. Right now, my day's been focused on racking up points in Splatoon's Splatfest. Why let something so insignificant rule your life? Sure, people who like Barney are weird, but why be angry at them? I'd say that if one took a metaphorical walk in my past shoes, then it's not really insignificant because of how much I saw that being played in high school when it clearly shouldn't be like two hours every day during my senior year. I think the reason I was angry was because of how much of them there are, and how no one really does anything to try to correct their clearly misinformed ways. Why were you in the SPED program in the first place? I don't know. I guess my parents thought I was an autist when I haven't been re-diagnosed since I was six. I did address the issue a good year and a half after I left, talking to one of the people over the phone. If it bothered you so much, why not address it while it was relevant? Because there was this one Barney fan, who was like four years older than I was BTW, watching Barney on the computer, I tried telling him why he shouldn't be watching it, and then the counselor came out and threatened suspension if I continued my behavior. So I just didn't do anything much during my time there. So wait, let's examine this a little more closely. Did they expect all of you to watch Barney, or was there just one kid who enjoyed it? Because if it was on the computer, that sounds more like something he was choosing to do rather than something you were forced to do. No. It was more like seven Barney fans I knew in real life back in high school. Of the seven I knew, it seemed like maybe half were genuine fans that had the ability to search that shit up, and half were just dumped in front of a computer screen that played Barney. It's hard to tell which ones were the real fans, but seven of them is still way too goddamn much. If you were given a gun and put in front of someone you deem a degenerate, would you shoot them? Only if there were no legal consequences to my actions, and if I felt that no matter what I did, any attempt to try to change them wouldn't get through. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that'll happen in the near future, so I'd rather keep that to myself. So, wait, you were merely in the same room as these guys watched Barney on a computer. Why not bring a pair of headphones and listen to your own music or whatever? I did, actually. I'd listen to Cannibal Corpse albums albeit skipping a few songs here and there, so I could time it so that the last song would end when each Barney episode would end. It made for some pretty interesting scenarios. For example, having I Love You start to play once I got to the breakdown of Innards Decay. Of course, over time, I started being able to acquaint myself with which episodes came from which season. So if it was a season one episode, I'd listen to Butchered at Birth. Season two, Tomb of the Mutilated. Season three, The Bleeding. Season 4, Vile and so forth. Not only that, I think he said before he could leave the room if he wanted. It makes his force to watch Barney's story less true. Okay, fine. I stretched the truth a bit there, but I felt it was easier to explain that way. Why even pay attention to the Barney sh 
Was the computer linked to a projector or something? You could say it was a more sickening curiosity of how far, how much they'd play this Barney sh** before they'd realize that enough was enough. It seemed as if that weren't the case, though. They pretty much played that shit through my whole senior year. It f***ing sucked. There were multiple computers in this room. One of them had a projector attached to it. The other computer off to the side is where they dropped the cards in front of Barney. During my second semester, they started playing dad rock concerts for this student with locked-in syndrome in the same room as the f watching Barney. These concerts included Pink Floyd's Pulse, Queen's Wembley Stadium concert, Bachman Turner Overdrive, and so forth. And they were just ruined for me, because now I think of Barney whenever I think of those bands. Possibly as an effect of how they were trying to infantilize me. And yes, Barney was played on the projector computer at least once, when the computer they usually watched Barney wouldn't work. Even Batman the Animated Series was ruined for me, because on the last day that they were playing that shit, at the end of the day, they played an episode of BTAs, I can't remember which one, on the projector computer. I was just f***ing done at that point. Did I try to find some way to cope? Well, sort of. I watched the Animaniacs episode, Baloney and Kids, pretty much every day when I came back home from school, when my brother wasn't in the room, after which I felt cleansed. I can probably recite the entire episode from memory because of how much I watched it, which especially during the end of the year, seemed to be pretty much every day of the week. No, you flat out lied to make yourself seem less cripplingly autistic. They weren't trying to infantilize you. They were trying to provide for the kids who were literally on the same level as the intended audience and provide something interesting for the ones who weren't. If they wanted to do that though, they would have put on Sesame Street, which can do both those things. In fact, I'd pretty safe to say that if every instance of Barney I saw in there was replaced with Sesame Street, I wouldn't have as much of a problem with it. I might think it's odd, sure, but at least it's not f***ing Barney. Sesame Street has actually proven time and time again that they can be relevant and actually amusing to people outside of its target demographic. I can't say I'm an active watcher of the show now, but considering what I've been through, I definitely respect the amount of effort that the writers put into making the show. I remember that show had a song based off of Alice Cooper's I'm 18, an artist who I saw back in 2011. That was genius. It seemed as if by playing Barney all the time and the other sh like Pink Floyd, Rush, Wreck-It Ralph, and Batman, it felt like they were trying to mock me, as if they were saying, hey, you like Rush? Well, guess what? It's on the same level as Barney, so ha. Uh... I genuinely think your posts are stupid and bewildering when I read them. And now you know why I don't like talking about this particular situation I'm in. So you believe that a government-run institution specifically targeted you in such a way to make your life miserable? How did they miss your incredibly obvious paranoia disorders considering that you were in a special education program? Did you ever comment on how you hated other slow in the minds? I'd say they were the ones that made me paranoid. Everything that had happened in my life just happened to fit so perfectly with what had happened there. Just when I felt there was no excuse for what happened, things fell into place. And yes, I did complain about the other lowlives that were beyond saving. Doesn't he claim to go to university already? How can he keep up his lifelong schedule and take classes? I have this RSS feed on my laptop as well, so I keep an eye on it whenever it updates during my lectures. I'm curious now. Have you ever gotten psychiatric help or tried to get it? I always had plans to, but I never could go through with them for whatever reason. How is your relationship with your family, Barney? Are they aware of your obsession? My family hardly knows about it. If anything, the only reason my parents know about it is because I wanted to send the letter to the high school I was tortured at. They don't know I do this on the side. I've told no one IRL that I do this. Is there like some scenario you have in your head where you are going to win this argument? Do you have an end game or is this just your only social outlet? I think my end game is probably when I go back to normal when MLP ends. Hopefully with the full-length theatrical movie they announced. Then I'll consider my work complete. That will be the end of the current generation of MLP, apparently. Not sure yet, but given its 2017 release date, it seems most likely. I think I started raging about Barney because of MLP to begin with. Serious question. Do you have any friends at all? Do you ever go out for a beer with the lads? I just hang out with my brother's friends because I could never find any of my own TBH.
I never really had any huge violent outbursts, except maybe for threatening one annoying piece of shit with locked in syndrome, who'd always be wheeled into my music class for some reason. That was about it though. How I managed to keep my violent rage plugged in during my high school years, I'll never know. If I went back to that time, I'd beat the Barney fags there to death for messing me up and turning me into who I am. To be completely honest, I didn't know what he had at the time, and I was just plain venting because I had a bunch of shit going on because I was unable to hand in my assignment on time, so I just took it out on him. Yes, I admit that was wrong. I don't even think I saw him watching Barney, but he just kind of seemed like he had no purpose to be there. But if you were in my situation, he was just wheeled into the class, just being there most days. Do I regret it? Yes. You think that he didn't deserve to live, don't you? Well, he seemed he'd be better off dead than the way he was then. And hearing him make annoying noises during my graduation to the point where he had to be wheeled out only made me realize further how much he desperately needed something done to him. I mean, if I had a child who grew up to be like him, I'd probably just give up. Either take him out or ship him out somewhere where I wouldn't deal with him. To me, it's either I have a fully functioning child that I can be proud of, or I have no child. What's it like to look into the mirror every day and see a soulless monster gazing back at you? While I never really look in the mirror every day, it feels kind of bad that this was what I was made into. Again, I shouldn't be like this, but so be it. They crafted me into this individual who places himself above all those he sees unworthy because of how he was placed with those who are unworthy, regularly and repeatedly. It sometimes feels like I'm just this one guy whose viewpoint is never seen because of the simple fact that the world is against me. I have the feeling that quite a few of the posts I've made have shown self-awareness, but people seem to be too inept to figure out which posts I show them in. It's quite a long trek through the forums to find them, but I've shown signs that I'm aware that people hate me, and I do realize that my current life as it is, is a mess, and I need to fix it. Lee was fairly confident in his anonymity and never shared his secret with those in his personal life. Everything would change on November 16th, 2016, when an anonymous poster would leak Lee's real name, Facebook account, and other personal information. Lee would inadvertently confirm this information as true by reporting it as doxing. Five days later, Lee gave his take on the situation. Okay, I believe that this has gotten out of control. My personal information on here has been compromised, and one of my friends has been informed that this has happened through a message someone sent to him on Facebook, with the link attached to this thread. He is shocked, extremely upset and nervous now that his safety is in jeopardy as well. I want to clarify a few things with you. 1. Yes, I have had negative thoughts towards disabled people before, but I can say with the utmost certainty that I have not, nor will I ever act on such thoughts. I know they are bad. We all have inner emotions towards certain people that we will never act on. Two, as an autist, these emotions are out of my control. I realize they are wrong, but it is difficult for me to contain these emotions. Three, my brother never knew about the severity or extreme thoughts I had. I would keep it hidden on my laptop from him, and he would trust me that I would not act impulsively online. Unfortunately, I did, and I realize I cannot take those words back. Four, Yes, I have been ranting about this group of people for years now. It was worse before, as I was in an environment with them every weekday at school. Now that I am out of high school, my thoughts towards them have been much less severe, but up until this day I would defend my opinions relentlessly because of my pride and dignity. I hate losing an argument, and I would try to push my points for the sake of not being wrong, and I would try to push my point if it meant making contradictory statements. Five. Lastly, as an autist, I have trouble communicating my thoughts. What I say online is out of sheer impulse and again, much of the time that is a reason my arguments would not make sense or be contradictory. I would spend countless hours on 4chan replying instantaneously to comments, instead of rationally thinking through my comment whether it would be right or wrong. My information is out there now, and I genuinely feel that is worse than impulsive thoughts I had towards the disabled. Were they bad? Yes, of course they are and I realize that. But you must realize not only am I a target for anyone who wishes to get revenge on myself, but my brother and his connections are as well. I know most of you will not forgive me, and honestly, I do not expect forgiveness. People will still call me names, 
People will still threaten me and make assumptions about my personal life. None of that honestly matters. What matters is me and my family's safety. I caused a lot of you trouble and time to reply to my idiotic, unreasonable remarks. And still, I sincerely apologize. But I do ask of all of you one thing, to move past this. The damage has been done and there is no magical way for this to all be solved. However, all I ask is that I be treated with some kind of respect. If you feel you've reached an end game, then feel free to leave at any time. This seemed like the wake-up call that Lee needed to finally get his mind and life straightened out, but he simply could not help himself. Only hours later, Lee was found replying to pony threads on V. His posts on Kiwi Farms would become less frequent and stop in 2017, but his posts on 4chan did not. On August 3rd, Lee's band, White Cap Grave, revealed Lee had left the project. In July 2020, Lee had posted an image of Tracer from Overwatch with great attention to detail to her feet. Since this, Lee had become associated with foot fetishes and the smell of cheese. His missed threads would then be known as Missed Cheese. In 2022, a soy teen had hacked his Kiwi Farms account in a futile attempt to gain his attention. Lee's account still gets logged into by somebody occasionally. Since he has long since stopped posting in his thread and on social media, it is unknown how he has been doing. His online persona was likely the only outlet he had to express his problems with his education. But having his issues forcibly brought to light may have done him some good in the long run. It is possible that he has since worked through his issues, put his past behind him, and now lives a functional adult life. Or perhaps he never grew out of being that angry boy in high school who hated Barney.